And welcome to lesson four, the conclusion, wrapping it up. My name is Andy Baker. Let's jump right in. So today, the contents of today's lesson, we're going to talk about the purpose of the conclusion. What is the purpose of the conclusion? We're going to talk about what it's not. I'm going to give you some possible points that you want to cover during con your conclusion. I'm going to give you a basic formula. If it's five points, and if you can hit all five, you've probably got a pretty good conclusion. And then I'm going to give you a short list of three things to not do in your conclusion. Here we go. So what is the purpose? The purpose of the conclusion is to explain why your results are important and how they contribute to the field, and to reflect on what you have found and to wrap it up for the reader. This is like a story. This is the end of the story. You had a beginning, you had the middle, and you have the end, and this is the end. It's like the, there's a very famous speech formula. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to tell you what I told you. And that's what you're doing here. You're essentially doing that. You're going to tell them what you told them, but what it means more. You're not just going to restate it. Here we go. So what is, what is it not? What it is not? The conclusion is not a summary or abstract of the paper. That is called the abstract. So if you're just summarizing the paper, you're not doing the right thing. It's also probably taking up a lot of space that doesn't need to be taken up. So just if you feel like this is really a summary, then you're going to, you should take a second look at it. Or maybe send it to somebody like me and say, hey, is this, am I, crazy or does this just sound like a summary of my paper? Okay, here we go. All right, some possible point, points to possibly cover in your conclusion. I'm not going to read all these, but I will tell you that it is not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to use all of these, and it's not necessary to use them in this order. So there's a lot of stuff here. So describe the broader context, um, list pra practical applications, uh, point out limitations. There's all sorts of things that could be included depending on your subject matter. If you're talking about a whalebone versus a beef croquette, what, questioning whether the beef croquette really is just beef or how old this whalebone is, you're going to need different stuff. So depending on what it is, this stuff could be included and it could be left out. All right, I'll have this in a PowerPoint separate so you can just see it if you want to see it. So here's the basic formula. All right, number one, you're going to briefly explain the topic and why it's important. Don't spend a lot of time or space on this. It's probably going to be a sentence, but just introduce your conclusion with that, a brief explanation of what the topic of the paper is. Of course, they've read the entire paper, but you're going to just restate it and try not to repeat yourself. All right, restate or rephrase this thesis statement. I really think that rephrasing is better. Copying and pasting from the introduction is just, is just lazy. Re rephrase it somehow. There's, there's tools on the internet for that. You could also try to rephrase it and send it to me and say, does this mean the same thing as this? I'm totally willing to help with stuff like that. All right? You're going to state your findings. So find a way to briefly restate each point mentioned. Just the topic sentences. Don't repeat any of the supporting details, but we found, you know, three things about these croquettes. Point, point, point. Okay? For example, here's another, this is actually really nice. Based on this particular research method, we were able to resolve X, Y, and Z. And it's, it's, the points are listed, and it's, if it's referential to what you wrote before, but it's not just copy-paste, putting stuff in. Okay? Number four, you're going to add the points up. What does that mean? You're going to give the big picture of where you think the future researchers could take this idea. This could also sort of mush into the next little bit, you'll see. But, for example, these findings indicate that there are several loose ends to study in getting a better sense of veal croquettes and what's or what's in what's in supposedly vegetarian 
or non non pork products, whatever. Say you're going to say that basically you're going to say that there's lots of routes left to further this research, because even with veal croquettes or beef croquettes, there's probably a lot of research to be done. All right, you're going to remind, and lastly, you're, in this piece, you're going to remind the reader what the aim of your study was and how it was fulfilled. This also goes with the objectives. You're going to remind them of the objectives and how they were fulfilled or not fulfilled. Okay. Lastly, you're going to make a call to action when appropriate. Again, this may not be, but it's, it's not it's essential for all conclusions. But here's a nice example. Despite new efforts to diagnose and contain the disease, more research is needed to develop new antibiotics that will treat the most resistant strains of tuberculosis and ease the side effects of current treatments. Ta-da! Clearly not about the croquettes. But it was a nice example. Just call call to action. Here's here's where some research could be, more research could be done in this area, or not just in croquettes, but also in vegetarian pizzas or whatever. I'm mixing up vegetarianism and carnivorism. I realize, but anyway. So you could also just side note. You're going to bring bring things full circle. So I really liked this example. It's the it's an introduction. And then there's a the couple of lines from the introduction, a couple of lines from the conclusion. We're just going to look at how they relate. So I'm going to read a little bit. Just as animals around the world have evolved to better survive their environments, botanical life everywhere has been forced to grow and adapt their habitats. I'm going to pause here and say, so there's animals around the world evolving, da, 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 and then they relate that to botanical. And they talk clearly for a little bit. There's an ellipse. And then, then the greatest example of plant, that should be a T, plant adaptation, however, is found in a unique succulent, more commonly known as the cactus. So they're, it's, it's this inverted pyramid thing that they're doing there. They're starting very general, and they're going to specific. And then, with the conclusion, they start at the top of the pyramid. The succulent family is, without a doubt, one of the plant world's most evolved species. Their main unique traits traits make them perfect for survival in the cruel inhospitable desert environment and then it gets a little more general ending with succulents are a proud family of plants that will continue to grow flourish and be respected by humans wherever they find themselves on earth for millennia to come so it's just a nice full circle inverted inverted pyramid body pyramid at the bottom Works beautifully. One thing you should think about when you've written your conclusion, does it answer the so what question? Does the paper answer the so what question? You know, you've, we've all heard people tell stories or say things and you look at them, you're thinking, so what? If you read your paper and at the end of your paper, you're thinking to yourself, so what? Then maybe you want to rejigger it or refocus things or figure out what that what it would take to make it the so what thing question, the so what question not be asked or be obvious. Part five, let me tell you some things to not do. There's three of them. First of all, again, do not summarize. This is not a summary of your paper. Don't bring in new information. I've also seen people do this. At the very end of the paper, they bring in something. I'm thinking, where was that? Where was that in paragraph three? Do not bring in new information in the conclusion. That's not where it belongs. Lastly, don't make apologies anywhere in the paper. I'm not an expert. I'm just a student, but that's that's not helpful. That's not helpful to your cause. It doesn't, it's not appropriate. So don't make apologies for anything in terms of this paper, like about why it's not so good or whatever. Just don't. All right, so what have we covered today? We've talked about the purpose of the paper, what it is not, some points to possibly cover. I've given you a basic formula of five points, really four if you leave off the fifth one. And you're going to talk about some things, I talked about some things to not do. Conclusions, read conclusions. That would be a very nice way to get a feel for it. Just pick up a scientific paper, read the conclusion. You can see the basic format of what they've done. And if you find something that really think that really works, copy that. Not the words, but copy. you can copy the format or copy the order in which they did things or copy the way they 
twisted something or did some little literary thing. That's just, that's not, you're, you're not copying. That's not plagiarism. That's just using someone's really great format ideas. And if you think that's not legit, basically anything from, I think 1945, everything's based on something else. I, I read that someplace. Don't quote me, but everything is based on something else. This whole format is based on something else. So if you see someone doing something really cool, think, well, let me try that. Just give me a try. Anyway, that is the end of that. If you have any questions, email me and I'll answer them. I think this is the last week of classes. So your best chance is to email me. I'm very responsive and very regenerate, very generous with that email. So, all right, that's the end of that. I hope to, I wish you all the best of luck and everything, and I will be available. Bye-bye.